If you've been following along in our tutorial series, you'll know that I've been complaining about some of the aspects of our design here, uh, or the, the way the template has been showing up with, you know, these harsh white backgrounds and, uh, you know, the color of the text. And each time I said that, I thought in my mind, there's got to be something that I missed uh, when we were uh, working on the template uh, customization tutorial. And uh, so sure enough, I checked, uh, let's go um, over to extension and template manager and take a look there, show you under spectral default, click on that. And uh, let's go to the style tab, take a look and see where I made my mistake. The template customization that you're allowed uh, to do in this particular template, the spectral template, is, is quite extensive. You'll notice how we've been able to create a gradiated background and some, uh, you know, be very specific in some accent colors and, uh, you know, even the specific background uh, color of the header uh, of, our, you know, the top of our page, we can be very specific and define that. But when it comes to the actual body style, uh, the background of your articles, the only real two options you are given for that in this template are light and dark. Uh, now this will vary from template to template as to what they uh, will give you um, full control over here in the template manager. So, uh, even within the rocket themes I seem to remember other templates where we we're able to customize the the background color of our articles very easily just like we have been able to with accent color and and the header color and that type of thing. Uh, but for this particular template it's just either light or dark and somehow we had left this on light at one point and that's what was giving us the white background. So that is something that you can customize a little bit further than what we had uh, in the template manager. Let's save this and take a look at what we've got now. And uh, we see we now have a dark background to our articles. And uh, while that uh, is much better than the white, it may not necessarily be the color that you were thinking it should be to match the rest of your site. And so how do we change this background color? Where do we go to make that change? Or let's say we wanted a different color for the fonts. Uh, how can we change the fonts? You know, what if we wanted our, our open window here to be just a little bit wider or smaller? How can we make those kind of specific detailed changes or customization in a, a template that, uh, you know, only gives you a, a limited number of options for customization in the, in the actual template itself? Well, <laughs> this is the tutorial that we've been promising uh, to come for some time now where we will show you how you can make very fine detailed customizations to your complete site with just one or two lines of code. And the reason I've been holding off doing that because I didn't want to scare people off. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that this tutorial series is going to be simple enough and step by step enough that people who have never built a website before can actually sit down and do it without ever really learning code. And I, I was afraid that if we started talking about you know, customizing your CSS files that uh, we might scare some people off and I didn't want to do that. But in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can do that even still if you don't know how to code. It's very simple the way it's been set up here uh, at Rocket Theme. And uh, so let's get started. Traditionally the way that you would um, change the code or add a few lines of uh, code to your CSS files would be by using an FTP program to get to your site. And if you're interested in knowing more about uh, FTP programs, we do have a tutorial here to show you how to get a program like FileZilla. And using a program like this, you can actually visit your server, your host provider, your location on site, on, on the internet, and actually open up the files on that hard drive, that remote hard drive somewhere in Chicago, maybe who knows where they're storing all this information. Depends where what host provider you went with, where that computer is resting. For example, right now I believe my host provider is in Chicago. I'm actually accessing files in Chicago uh, by using this FTP program. And the way we would change our, or customize our template is to go into the templates folder and go to uh, the spectral template that shows up here. And what you would do is uh, open up one of these files 
and uh, do a view edit and using a text editor that you would have installed on your computer, something like Bluefish over here, this file would open up. You could make changes to the file, save it, and uh, then those changes, that customization would be reflected on your website. Well, there's a couple of problems with doing it that old way, and that is that if the template is updated by Rocket Theme, and you want to take advantage of the newly released version of the template, and so you install that template, well, all of those changes that you made to fine-tune and customize your site using CSS code would all be gone. It would, they would be overwritten by the new version of the template. And so if you had 100 um, lines of code that were customizing your site the way you wanted it to be exactly, then after you installed the latest version of the template that might be addressing security issues or might be adding new features, you know, it's important to keep updated, well, then all of a sudden you have to go back and make all of those changes all over again to get your site back to the way it was. And so our friends at Rocket Theme have come up with a better solution, and that is to work with a custom CSS file, a standalone file where you make all of your customizations, and then as you update your template, your custom CSS file will still be accessed by the new template and it'll check and see all of the custom changes you want and apply them to the new template. So you only have to make your customization once and no matter how many times you update your template, all of the custom changes that you made will be reflected. You don't have to do it over and over again. So that is a really great feature and we're going to show you how to do it. Okay, there's a couple of different ways we could do this if you are comfortable working with FTP and you know how to get to your server that way. You could create this file using your FTP program and uh, some text editor that you have. You could even do it with Notepad, I believe. But uh, let's show you a way that you can do it with your cPanel. And if you're not quite sure what a cPanel is, we do have a tutorial here that uh, talks all about cPanels and uh, how to uh, work with them. But let's open up our cPanel for this site and uh, go to File Manager hit go and once again we are looking at the server or the file directory of our server in Chicago from my position here in Vietnam and with the uh, public HTML highlighted these files something very similar should be showing up on in your cPanel and the folder you're looking for is called templates we want to actually customize the spectral template that uh, we're working with so click onto that folder and look for a folder called CSS. Stay with me, it's, it's easier than it looks. Okay, now that we're inside the CSS folder, we want to create a new file inside that folder. And the way you can do that with the file manager of your cPanel is just go over to the very top corner and click on New File. And here is what you want to type in to create a very specific file that this template will look for every time it opens up. Every time it, somebody browses your site, the first thing that this template does is go take a look at this file to see if there's any custom uh, commands that will override the regular code that's uh, included in the template. So the file name uh, it has to be very specific, RT underscore spectral, which is the name of the actual template, and then a dash, and then custom, period or dot CSS. And if we take a look at this file name, let's break it down. The RT stands for rocket theme, as you might have guessed. And uh, the next uh, is very specific to this template. If you were doing this same process with a different template from rocket theme, you would want to put in the name here for that specific template. So for example, if you are working with the Hadron the January 2014 template from Rocket Theme. Well then, here in your file name that you're creating, rather than spectral, you would be typing in Hadron, H-A-D-R-O-N, for that template. But then the rest is the same, uh, no matter which template you're working for, a dash custom.css. And then just hit create new file. And that new uh, file that we have started will show up right there. Now, if we wanted to, uh, we could add our custom code right here in File Manager. Uh, there's an option to edit 
a file up here in your file manager. If we clicked on that, we could actually start adding our code here. However, there is a better way. Let's close out of this and go back to our Joomla back end. If you've still got templates manager opened up there, hit the close button over in the corner there. And then go over uh, in your menu options under site and go to global configuration. And here, go to your default editor. Yours is probably still on JCE from our last tutorial. What we want to do is change it to rock pad and hit the save and close. And if you're, uh, if, if rock pad doesn't show up here under default editor, that is something, it's a little extension that you can get at rocket theme. Uh, go to rockettheme.com, go to extensions, and you'll see here the, one of the options is rock pad two, and you can download that. It's a free extension. Anybody can use this hit the download button, get that. And once you've installed it with your extension manager, that should show up here under one of the uh, editors that is available. And so select that, save and close that. And uh, people might uh, say, well, why are we getting RockPad? Why do we need RockPad? Why do we want to use RockPad when we've got JCE? Well, the difference between JCE text editor and RockPad, if we opened up our article here, we'll see that this is not a what you see is what you get editor. Uh, you know, you can scroll down here. We don't see the photographs that we put in there. It's all scrunched together. There's no formatting on the text. There's, there's code there. It looks like HTML code. And it's just, for someone who doesn't know coding, it's a very difficult editor to work with. However, if you are a coder and are developing software, it is actually a better way for you to work. This RockPad editor will not add any special codes that even the JCE editor might. Remember, we were talking about the hidden codes that could come in from Word or some other word processor if you brought that into JCE. Well, people who really work on the back end of uh, software find that it's just so much easier and less potential for hidden codes to enter into their CSS files if they just work with code. And I, apparently, I guess, once you understand all this language here in your mind, you can visualize everything just based on the code. However, for me, and I know for a lot of people who are just wanting to put up some articles on their website, you know, and some pictures, some video, it's just a lot easier to work with a what you see is what you get editor. And for the most part, it's pretty fail safe. Um, you're not going to run into too many problems if you're just adding content to your site. So most of the people who are working uh, in your office, they probably wouldn't hardly ever use the RockPad editor. Uh, they would just stick with a, a good editor like JCE. But the reason why we want to point this out and show you that uh, RockPad is available and it's a tool that uh, you should know about is because when you want to uh, do some very specific changes to your site, like for example, I'm not happy with the color of the background. It's a lot better than the white, but the gray here just still isn't quite working for me and I want to change this color. Well, the only way that you can really do that is by adding a line or two of CSS code, and you want to be able to do that using a text editor like RockPad to make those kinds of changes. So let's show you how you do that. With the, your RockPad selected as your editor of choice over in Global Configuration, let's go over to Extensions and go down to Template Manager. And you'll notice at the very top here, there's two tabs. One is Styles and one is Templates. We want to uh, go over to the tab that says Templates. Scroll down and look for the template that we're working with, the Spectral Template, and click on the link there. And now you'll see, as you look over to the uh, right-hand panel, you'll see that very special file that we just created in our cPanel, our file manager of the cPanel, the uh, RT Spectral Dash Custom CSS. And if we click on that, this will open up a panel where we can start adding code right within the back end of Joomla. We don't have to use FTP. We don't have to use you know, Notepad++. We are actually able to change uh, these 
CSS files right from the back end of our Joomla. But then the next question is, what do we type in? <laughs> you know, if we want to be able to change the color of this background, what code do we type in now to change that color? If you're using Firefox, and I believe Chrome has something very similar. I've never used it, but if you're working with Chrome, look for an option uh, for this in that as well. It's a little extra plugin that you have to actually go to the wonderful folks over at Firefox and go to their website and look for something called Firebug. Download that and plug it in. And uh, then your browser will show this little uh, firefly, I guess it is, up in the corner here. And whenever you want to inspect the background code, that displays anything that you find on the internet. You can do that just by clicking on that. And what will show up in the box here are the commands, the computer code commands that are running in the background to be able to display the site that you're at. And if you want to look at something very specific and find out what, what's the code that's making it look like that, for example, let's take a look at our headline here. A film project is launched. You remember it from an earlier tutorial we were explaining how with one or two lines of code, you will be able to change the whole look of all of your headers through thousands of documents all in one sweep just by writing a couple lines of code. Well, here's how that works. Let's say we want to change this to be a larger font and maybe change the color of the font of our headline. Well, the way that we can discover that is, first of all, point to the little uh, icon here that looks like a mouse pointer pointing to a, a website document. <laughs> Click on that, and with that selected, point to the element that you want to discover the code on, and then you'll see that it highlights that specific line of code, and we'll see that it is prefaced by HTML coding H2, which is standing for header 2. Well, apparently the template is using H2 as their way to display whatever title you have used. I, I think that's what we went with in the end. We just decided to show titles. And so when you type uh, the name of an article in when you're making a new title, it's going to, by default, display at the top of your article in whatever has been defined by the template should be the font and color of H2. But let's say we want to change all of our H2 to something else. How can we do that? Well, as we look over to this uh, right-hand panel, scroll down, we'll see that right now the font size of H2 dot title is 200%. If we were to highlight those that those three lines of code and do a copy paste. Remember I told you I'm just more of a copy paste guy and that you don't really need to know code. Well, this is what we're talking about. We've copied that. Let's go back over to our source code. Let's paste that into our window here and let's change it to 300%. Let's save that, go back to our article and hit the refresh button and our title is now showing at 300%. Uh, what about changing the color of the font? Well, if we wanted to, we could add another line of code to do that. Uh, we could type in color, colon, and then type in a hex code of the color that you want to change it to. And some of you might be saying, well, <laughs> what's a hex code and how can I work with that? How do I know what to type in here? Well, there's a lovely little website that you can go to called color picker, C-O-L-O-R-P-I-C-K-E-R dot com. And here, uh, this website uh, allows you to simply uh, scroll up and down the sidebar here and also move around inside the big box to come up with a color that will work for you. Let's say we want a kind of a nice orangish harvest color for our, our title. And you'll notice that there's a code that shows up here at the top. Well, you can just copy that and then go back to your rock pad and type in the uh, hashtag there and then the color that we found. And save that and go back to our website, refresh. And now we've got the color that we want for our headline. 
Now, this may not seem that impressive for this one article, but imagine in your mind, if you now have a website that has thousands of articles, you know, it's a year or two down the road and you've really developed your website. <laughs> then one day your board gets together and say, you know, we, we want to update the website. We want to give it a new fresh look. How about, you know, changing the color of the, of the headlines? <laughs> if you have created your articles using the method that we recommended by just being able to show the actual article title like we're doing here, or at least uh, selecting your item your headline that you type in, the, the custom uh, headline, selecting that and choosing one of the header options from the drop-down list in your JCE editor. Well, now you can see you can change thousands of articles just with one or two lines of code. And that's where it becomes impressive. Okay, well, what about the background here? How can we change that? Well, let's open up Firefly again. Firefly? Fire, yeah, Firebug, sorry. And uh, let's choose our little selector tool here again. And let's get the blue uh, filling up our whole background color here. Click on it. And we should see showing up over here is the lines of code that define what this color is going to be. So let's just copy that and go back to our rock pad and add some more lines of code. Not by actually knowing how to code and typing it in, but just doing a copy paste. And now, uh, I believe it's this little hex code here that is actually giving us our color. We can go back and confirm that. If you hover over the actual hex code, you'll see the color shows up there. And when it shows you that it is the same color as the background color that we're looking at on site, then you know that that's the, uh, the hex code that we need to change if we want to change this background color for all of our articles. So let's go back to Rockpad and also let's open up Color Picker and come up with a color that we think might look a little better at our website. I'm thinking that something that's a little bit more blue rather than so gray will work a little better. Maybe something like that. So we'll just copy that code, go back to our rock pad, and then we'll just change that hex code out with our new one. Save that. Go back to our website, do a refresh, and now we've got a different background for our, our articles. As I look at that, I'm not quite happy with it. I'll probably go in and uh, play around with that, uh, maybe pick something a little darker. But uh, what about the text? What if you want a different color for your text in your articles? Well, I'm actually pretty happy with the white. It looks, looks pretty good on the dark background. Just to show you how you can do that, uh, just by going back to Rockpad, you'll see that in addition to the background color, we have the option for the color itself. So we could go to our, our color picker, for example, and choose something that uh, is a little grayer, maybe, that might not be so hard on the eyes, and see what that looks like. Change that out, hit a save, and now refresh, and you'll see that our font color has changed, not just for this article, but for the thousands of articles that are potentially on your site, all in one sweep by just changing, you know, swapping out one little hex code. And so you can see how easy it is to change your whole site. Something else I'd like to point out is, let's say you come up against an item that you would like to change, and you're not quite sure just how that is supposed to be done with the uh, Firebug. When you're a member at Rocket Theme, you can go to the Rocket Theme website, go to Forum, scroll down to find the particular template that you are working on. In this case, it's the Spectral template. And you can ask a very specific question to the forum. Uh, you know, how can I change this in my custom code? And usually, within an hour or two, somebody has uh, responded to your query, and, uh, actually typed in the code that you need to change to your uh, custom CSS file. Here again, you don't need to know how to code. You can just, from the forum, where somebody really knows what they're doing, has helped you out there, you can do a copy of that code, go back to Rockpad, and paste that code in, maybe make a few adjustments to that uh, to get exactly what you want to. Like maybe you want for this particular item to change it to 60% for your purposes. Uh, you know, you can make adjustments to the code that they suggest. But it, again, it makes it much easier than trying to learn CSS or HTML. 
just by having the ability to copy paste code from the uh, people there at Rocket Theme who really know what they're doing. Okay, so there you go, uh, some tips and tricks of how you can customize your website with custom CSS files uh, using Rockpad.